and we're back and we're rolling okay so this is part two of the real housewives of atlanta season 12 spoiler alert 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 i will do my intro but i'm not about to do it every single time that i have to change this video because it's already a lot to edit it and y'all do mean the world to me y'all are my everything i swear the only thing that matters matters to me oh baby 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 you gotta be fucked up if you think that i'm gonna be doing this intro every single time because i don't want to get tired of my intro either but with that being said, let's move on because we still got so much stuff to cover in the spoiler alert, 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 alert. Um, let me give you the next remaining um, episodes. Next remaining episodes is episode two, Cheating Hearts. Well, it's Cheating Hearts. And episode three is The Float Goes On. And episode four, Love, Marriage, and Sour Peaches. Let me get into the breakdown, y'all. Now, Cheating Hearts picks up where episode one leaves off after Kenya's return goes extremely left, child. Um, according to Bravo, the episode goes as followed. Cynthia and Candy try to clean up the mess in the aftermath of the Barbie bash. Kenya unleashes her unfiltered thoughts on Cynthia while struggling to make sense of her relationship Portia drops a bomb that no one is expecting. Now, I can only imagine what all is going to transpire. What the heck is Ken Cynthia going to talk? I mean, what the heck is Kenya going to talk to Cynthia about when she pretty much unleashes uh, some, you know, some thoughts on her that, you know, we can't we can't really fathom what the hell is going on. I don't know, but I'm excited. I don't, what is it going to be about? Is it going to be about Mark? Is it going to be about your, you know, your distant relationship and everything you're going through? Probably so, because they're good friends like that. And then I wonder what Eva the fuck is going to say that's going to piss Kenya off so much so that the whole party is going to go to shit when this is supposed to be your baby Brooklyn's coming out party. I don't understand. But anyways, y'all, I mean, I guess we're going to see. I'm not going to stress myself out about it too much because whoosa. It's a lot to unpack, and we got to unpack it during the season, child. Um, let's go on ahead and move on. The float goes on, child. This is um, the third episode. The float goes on. Now, the float goes on is about um, it's about Nene and Cynthia's falling out. We pretty much, we're going to touch base. We're going to touch and agree on that one and get that one together. Rumors of, rumors of Nene sitting out half the season obviously have su surfaced, right? So Nini, she goes on an interview at Magic 102.3, if I'm not mistaken. Now, they ask her if the rumors are true. Nini's like, absolutely not. She advises that she was never suspended. Um, and if she was suspended, that she would have said so. Because I guess for her, like, listen, Bravo is life. So everything that happens has to be addressed. Somebody would have said your ass was suspended. Andy, somebody. It would have been top news and you would have had to address it. But I don't think it's a suspension like y'all think it is. I think it's a strategic suspension. <laughs> I think we're not going to take nothing from you, but we're going to strategically suspend you and not have you in so many scenes as to not put you in harm's way when it's time for us to film pressured, forced shots. Okay, so let's move it along from that. However, Nene won't be on the first two episodes, allegedly. Now, Bravo's synopsis goes as followed. Um, Eva and Cynthia get closer as some of the ladies get ready for worldwide pride in New York City. Okay? Um, uh, Kenya confides that she and Mark are having problems while Candy and Todd to debate parenting styles. Okay, so, okay. I, I don't know if that's going to have Todd and Candy. I don't know if that's going to have anything to do with the surrogate shit or just what we're going to do with Riley or Ace. I don't know what this has to do with, but I'm sure it's going to concern maybe all the kids, if not one. But I'm sure there's going to be a trigger child that we're going to put place in there if you guys will um Kenya confiding in everyone about Mark 
I mean, that was bound to happen. We knew that that was going to happen because there had been a lot with that. You guys had announced your divorce, like, on national TV or, or something. So, we knew it was going to be something there. But anyways, let's move on. And NeNe returns. Now, this is where I'm side-eyeing. NeNe returns with a new outlook on life and great news. Return from what? If you're not suspended, return from what? Are you returning from being booked and busy? Are you returning from, you know, being in a hospice with Greg, even though I can't even see you being in a hospice with Greg because y'all talking about open marriages and y'all trying to spice up your marriage and do all this kind of stuff. So I'm thinking everything, everybody's on the A-OK -okay with the health thing. I just don't see Greg wanting to be the one to have an open marriage because of the simple fact that he just had this cancer scare. I think all he wants is his wife and to be okay. I think Nene, if anything, want to be able to cheat in peace. With that being said, um, I don't know, guys. I, I, what, you, what do y'all think about, you know, Greg and Nene and, you know, the whole open marriage conversation? She did say that, you know, we are not considering open marriages yet, but we are having open conversations about open marriage. So I don't want people to get it twisted not over here on with this mouth, okay? Because I'm going to give it to you the way that it's been given and not the way that I see it. You might get a few Rennianas, but that's about it. Um, So with that being said, I'm just kind of confused about Nene and that whole her returning thing. But that's how Bravo chose to word it. I won't look too much into it, whatever. I'll just watch the show and see what's loop. Episode 4 is Love, Marriage, and Sour Peaches, child. Now, Sour Peaches picks up from episode three. This is the synopsis uh, that Bravo gave. On top of the float for Worldwide Pride, Cynthia and Nene come face to face for the first time since their fallout. Portia confronts the reality that Dennis was unfaithful. Kenya forced to acknowledge the growing divide in her, oh, Kenya is forced to acknowledge the growing divide in her long distance marriage tea time okay now we got some cheating allegations with dennis these cheating allegations began in like spring or summer of this year now bravo made the cast talk about the cheating allegations because allegedly they were mad at portia now why are they mad at portia they're mad at portia for creating a subscription service it was called peach lemonade tv it was $3.99 a month, okay? So they was trying to do like a tardy for the party thing and, you know, just kind of broadcast, you know, they real life on, on, that, on that subscription, on Lemonade, uh, uh, Peach Lemonade TV. Bravo was like, hell to the fuck no. They, said, they made them take the shit down. And here's, and, and here's why. There's a lot going on with that. Let me explain this shit right here. So the wedding special for Dennis and Portia was scheduled to be in like January 2020. I think it was supposed to be on the 11th, if I'm not mistaken. And what that would have done was that would have forced Bravo to have to do a spinoff for them. Okay. Now, because you made me take my shit down, here's when the wedding is going to be. The wedding is not going to be doing the show. You're going to have to do a spinoff. That way I can get my coin that I didn't get from the subscriptions I would have had if you would let me take my little just every day, whatever. We wouldn't even have been doing no real shit. It would have been no drama. But, you know, when you're doing shit live on television, shit happens. So, I don't know. But, anyways, let's move on, you guys. The wedding was scheduled to be in January 2020, which force it, which would be forcing Bravo to do a spinoff because filming ends in October. The cheating rumor helps for, you know, the makeup to break up scenario so that we can actually get the wedding story for a spinoff via Portia. I'm not, I'm not tripping off of the fact that, you know, Portia want to do this or if she want to make up a storyline or if the allegations is really true or if we got the information jiggled and jumbled and mixed up and fucked up. And so actually we did go through all of this shit, but we did make up and you guys will see the wedding January 2020. That's how I feel like the reality of the situation is. How it's being made to seem is like you guys are forcing them. 
You guys are forcing these allegations to come out, which you are. You're forcing the allegations to come out so that you can get as much as you can get out of this season, out of these girls. Because uh, word on the street is everybody trying so hard not to be problematic with each other. So I can see y'all turning that atten attention to y'all significant others and whatnots. Uh, with that being said, let's get to Cynthia and Mike's wedding. Cynthia and Mike, their wedding day is going to be 10-10-2020, guaranteeing not only Cynthia a peach for uh, the season, but she's also going to rule the finale. Of course, we're going to watch her wedding for the season finale. Of course. Why would we not? Um, with that being said, uh, we're going to move on to NeNe's suspension. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the video a little short. So that we could get a part three. And because uh, you know it's just it's so much quicker quicker for editing purposes and stuff. So I will be back with a part three for you guys. And I will see you in a minute.